Hi guys, this is Andres Parada uh, with Mold 3D Academy. Today I'm going to take you through my process of uh, sketching and designing a toy robot. So I got some uh, some guiding words for for the kind of robot I need to design. The intent with this robot is that I'll do some simple sketches that then are passed on to a, a, a modeler that will model this up in ZBrush. And Many times uh, when I start new projects, um, I write down a couple of keywords that that I want to keep uh, front and center as I'm as I'm designing, um, just to remind me. So some of the key words for this project is that it's going to be a toy. Um, it needs to be retro looking. Um, it's going to be a simple uh, simple design, uh, basic. It needs to be modular which means in this case that there will be a head, uh, some kind of a torso, an arm, a second arm, a leg, and a leg. And the idea is that you can switch the appendixes out and, and create a combination of, of, of robots by uh, switching arms and heads and legs. And uh, yeah, and last thing, it, it needs to be simple. Many times uh, when I before I start a project, I gather a couple of reference images and I put them together into a little collage uh, that helps me um, to to stay inspired to see what's been done already in the field and to just uh, pick up cues and and uh, as I'm designing my own version and as you can see here there's a bunch of very retro looking robots uh, <laughs> some common themes are are bulkiness of the bodies uh, not much details and attentions to like hinges and how they actually would move but more about uh, it's more about the, the overall silhouette and and uh, I guess the feel that that this robot is is trying to make you have um, so uh, I will look at this I will look at these reference images uh, from time to time as I'm designing and and pick up references uh, from it obviously all right, so let me take these words, scale them down a little bit, still have them there so I can see them and be reminded of them. The approach I will take today is to start first roughing out just some silhouettes um, and and basically work from the outside in. I'll probably do some 10 to 15-ish silhouettes and then from those pick out uh, a few favorites and then do some line drawings over them. This is an approach that isn't very common in the in the product design field. Uh, it happens that you do it. I've done it with power tools and with with soft goods, with some bags. It's more common in in, uh, in transportation design when when a lot of a lot of thought goes into the the silhouette of a of a car. Here you have a really ugly car, but where a lot of thought goes into something you call the A line, which is basically um, if you if you made a line that runs through over the car, uh, it's something you call the A line, and and it's basically the silhouette of the car. So so silhouettes in general is something that is always uh, important for any kind of design. And and today I will be, as I said, drawing, uh, starting up with just some silhouettes. They will be very rough. Uh, it's just, uh, it just to help me uh, to get the overall proportion and the overall stance of, of the robot and then go in and, and do some line drawings. So let's get started. Um, so take a pretty rough brush and just get started um, with and starting to build some shapes, you will see that I will be mostly just designing or doing like doing a kind of half a robot, and you will you will see very shortly why. But as I'm doing these things, thinking through what the what the shape is, I'm in this case making a very thick and big upper body uh, with some pretty hefty arms and some skinnier legs in the, a little bit longer even maybe there's some kind of a hip joint right there and afterwards I will 
just delete half of it. Let's see, and I want to copy this. Then Control T, right click on it, and I flip it horizontally, and then I just match it up. So by designing half of it, copying it, um, flip it horizontally, and then match it up, I can a little bit quicker generate a silhouette. And then also I can like play with this and see if I want a wider or, th or a thinner robot. So let's say in this case I actually like it a little bit thinner like that. Then afterwards I just go in <coughs> and uh, merge these layers. Um, and I might go in and just touch up a few things that doesn't seem correct. Like I would like where these joints connect to be a little bit thinner and I'm very aware that these are not now that I'm adding and taking away that these halves are not exactly symmetrical that's totally fine they will just serve as a base for then later when I go in and do um, when, later when I go in and do some line drawing adding suggesting some eyes maybe these bulky things here are the forearm but they actually have some longer longer fingers and hands right here and maybe one of these shoulders have some kind of a thicker antenna here as I see some of these robots having antennas coming out of their heads maybe this one has antennas coming out of the, his his shoulder all right I hide that layer and start a new one. And this next one I want to make a, I think, a thicker body. I'm inspired by this one over here, which has a very thick, big body <coughs> um, and a much smaller little head. I'm thinking that there might be some, some legs coming off. It's also helpful as, uh, when you're designing this approach to, to go both ways, uh, to design or draw both ways if it's hard to visualize. Um, but for, for, for the sake of time, I'm only designing, as I showed before, I'm only designing half of it, then copying, pasting, and flipping. This body became a little bit too square, which is fine. And as you can tell, I'm not concerned at all about the details I'm just trying to push out some some interesting shapes um, some interesting shapes that that makes me that makes it feel like a like a retro toy like uh, and a very basic robot I'm not paying attention at all to hinges or how it would necessarily move the arms a little bit I mean I'm imagining some kind of a pivot going right here and some kind of a pivot going right here but exactly what kind of, of hinge and how it would pivot and what kind of joint it would be I'm not too concerned about that at the moment okay um, delete that again copy that layer command T right click on it flip it horizontal and move it over that feels a little bit too fat for me, so I just move him to where it makes me comfortable with the design, and about there. I merge those layers, and then I keep adding and, def and refining. Maybe in this case, <coughs> you will have um, from one of the arms a couple of, a couple of cords connecting why they would be outside and not wired inside the arm I don't know but it looks it always looks a little bit cool when when there are some exposed cords or exposed machinery in in robots I I, I find it uh, appealing it it's it's the appealing might be the wrong word but it's there's something really nice with the raw mechanics of, of how things work I'm not liking how this body uh, is close to uh, ref reflect 
the upper part and the lower part are close to the same but not the same so I want to distinguish one part from the other um, and maybe do something like that starts getting interesting if I start playing a little bit more with the negative shape perhaps and now that original fat body that I had in the beginning disappeared but that's fine it's just been you know a couple of minutes on this um, maybe this one has the classic hole in the middle <coughs> okay I'll go on and I'm just starting a new layer f for each one um, Okay, this next one, I'm looking at this robot down here and how he has very long appendixes. His arms are, are long and his legs are, are long as well. Now I think I'm going to try to pick up some of that. He has a big square head and I might go the same approach, giving him quite a bit of a head and a little bit longer skinny body. Of, uh, In this case, almost like monkey-like arms, and I can already tell that oh, that body is too thick. There we go. That starts becoming much more interesting to me. I think this will work. I like the thick to thin that goes from here, from the thicker shoulders to the thinner arms to the thick, massive hands. Here, the thick head to thin. <coughs> Thin, thin neckline to a little bit of a thicker body to long skinny legs. I think there will be an interesting play here of thick to thin. Um, again, I duplicate that. Command T if you're working on a Mac. Flip it horizontal. And the fun thing when you do this, when you design and half flip it and, and work, is that you can actually play a little bit with these two halves and and maybe start seeing things that you didn't see before. Like, I actually kind of like that. It's not appropriate for the design we're doing right now. It's not neither very basic or, or simple, but something interesting starts happening here with the negative shapes. Um, and it's just, a, it's just a good way to kind of explore and, and, and start seeing. Um, gives you the option uh, to to, to do things or see things uh, and discover things that you didn't have in mind in, in the beginning. All right, here the main thing I'm trying to think of is the, getting the right proportion right here in the body and the head. And I think I want him to be something like this, maybe even skinnier, like that. So when I'm happy with it, I merge the layers again and I do the final corrections. Uh, this big head makes me think that he has two uh, very dominant eyes over here. Maybe one of them is a little bit upset so like that. It already gives him some kind of a character, makes us think of a, of a mean bad robot. <coughs> kind, of, kind of like that. Alright, I don't like that part hanging down. So I just lift it up, maybe even give it some negative space like that. I do like this these angles coming in, give him a, a sense of being a little bit fragile, and also it plays uh, it makes an opposite of how the arms go out. So the arms uh, flare out, and the and the legs kind of flare in. I do think that I need to give him a little bit more of a foot give him some stability and I will just play with these fingers a little bit and see if I, I... I'll leave that for now all right so for time's sake <coughs> I'm going to stop the, rec uh, the recording and um, pick it up again when I have all the 10 to 15 uh, silhouettes um, but this is what I will continue doing for the next 10-15 minutes.